it's creating something from nothing that came from nothing when I found something. Wow. Now that, that doesn't sound any wow. better either. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds quite philosophical actually. Yeah, it does actually, yeah. The funny thing is, I never actually wanted to be an artist. That was the weird thing. I could draw, paint, and do all that type of stuff growing up, but to, um, being an artist was probably the last thing that I wanted to be. In fact, I didn't know what I wanted to be. <laughs> that was probably more apt with everything. Um, went through school, did art, got told by the art teacher my fingers were too short to become an artist. That was the worst thing. In fact, the worst thing is he held me hand up and said, look, your finger's too short, you can't, you can't hold a brush. So. Uh, that kind of put me off for the next 46 years, somewhere like that, just some, something crazy. But I um, trained initially as an architect and surveyor and, and then did the wrong thing, actually went to work for a council, which is really boring because you get there's no creativity in that shell at all. And um, I eventually jumped from there and went into fashion. And that's where everything changed because I started um, a position at, of all things, a sock factory. They were the first company to actually have a CAD system. And we are talking now, it was like mid 80s towards late 80s. And they got this system from Japan and it was a huge thing. It was a great big slab with a pen. Nobody knew how to use it. But I turned up and I did a little bit and I had a bit of a play on it and I started to learn all the design side and then they thought well how can we use it on socks and somebody had the fantastic idea of contacting Disney they wanted to put Disney characters on socks so we had Disney artists submit work to us for me to actually copy onto computers using this CAD system and the Disney artists were charging like a thousand pound for one piece of artwork Nobody else were allowed to do it, and only I was allowed to trace it for these products. And um, pretty much, I got that used to doing it. I eventually started to draw my own Disney characters and get them approved by Disney. So it went the other way around. So I become one of the first people to be approved outside of Disney in the UK to actually produce products for Disney in store. And that's where things started to change. Uh, then we went on to loads and loads of different things. We did Marvel, DC, um, Thomas the Tank, Teletubbies, anything, everything. everything. It was everything. just absolutely everything just bombarded us in this small little, I say small group, it was one of the biggest design studios outside of London. And we just had fun. We just, we just went berserk with it, learning anything and everything about design, um, working with all the characters, working with all the high street stores. And it was such a massive grounding of stuff. Um, until that led me up to 2003 and 2003 um, I wanted to do something a little bit different so I started to create characters I'd already been painting I'd been doing things like um, caricatures of different people just simple things and painting portraits which is really crap because painting portraits you have to make people look like themselves and if you take liberties and start altering noses and things like that people get to get a bit upset so I want to do something along those lines but actually capture the person and that's where the impossibles came from in fact the first people that I did was my bosses at where I was working and there was two of them one shorter than the other I used to walk in the morning one was looking over the shoulders of the other and um, I captured those two in a piece called the management and that was simply just one looking over the shoulder of the other based on the David Bailey's photograph of the Cray twins from the 60s a very famous one and I did that in 2003 and um, I thought hang on maybe I've got something here so we printed them didn't we mm. and we printed a couple of other things and we took them to some galleries that we thought might be interested and interested please no it's not art not interested at all and we got kicked out of every single gallery that was that was phenomenal because we, we, mm. we were sure we got something so we thought well, okay um, we'll have a stall, we'll have an art stall, didn't we? Mm. And went to craft markets yeah. and things like that. And basically we were selling them hand over fist, which was ridiculous. So I went back to the galleries, said, look, you know, we, we're selling now. Are you interested in having this type of stuff? Not really. Um, we might have one space for it. And the first gallery we got into, we remember this quite clearly, 
and it was in Derbyshire. And um, they took the work on and they said, we'll hang it up for you. Well, they did. They hung it on what they call the dead wall. And the dead wall was right at the back round the corner and it was facing nobody in particular. So to find it, you had to wind your way through this gallery and etc. And I thought, well, better than nothing. And it was because they sold everything straight away. And it just kept selling and selling and selling, wasn't oh. it? The more we supplied, the more it sold off the wall. So we uh, thought, right, we need to approach somebody with this. And we approached um, Castle, which was Washington Green at that particular time. And um, we sent a portfolio off. Half past eight half at past night. Half past eight at night, yeah. I eventually got him to send the email. Yeah, yeah. Sent it off at half past eight at night and uh, went to bed. Thought nothing of it. Not at all. Sat, sat at work the next day, uh, diggling away and everything, just about to get my lunch, and there was a phone call from an unrecognised number on the phone. And I picked it up, and it was um, Glyn Washington, of uh, Washington Green. And the rest is history. Yeah, it basically said, don't do anything. Wait till we speak to you. Don't talk to anybody else. Yeah, and then life changed completely. Because, and they came round on the Saturday. Yeah, it was just within, yeah, the Saturday within seven days of that, I'd left a job of 16, nearly 16 years. Just literally went into yeah. free fall. Yeah. Because we, were, we, we so knew it was right, and we so wanted to give it a shot, and this was the one shot. And Washington Green gave me that chance to get the work in the galleries into a position mm. where we, we, we knew that people would actually see it. So from that point, um, within seven days I left my job, within three weeks of that, they'd got the first publishing um, contract sorted, and we went straight into launching a collection called The Artist's Prize in mm. 2005, and that was May, May, 2005. May 2005. That hit the floor running, and it sold out in 24 hours. The, the entire lot just, just cleared out like that, and it's just not stopped since. Yeah. It's, that's how we've, We've treated it. Yeah. We've, we've enjoyed it as an absolute roller coaster ride for 16 years. Uh, not 16 years. How many is it? 18 years now? Something like that? Yeah, 18, yeah, 19, 18, 19, I think 19, 19 years. in yeah. May. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's been an absolute. But we joy. love the characters more, more now yeah. because we have they are them. so ingrained yeah. in our life, aren't they? Yeah, but the best thing with this is the people we've met along the way, the mm, collectors. The collectors, the collectors have fantastic. really, really made this. Really fantastic. We wouldn't have been able to do this if it wasn't for the collectors. It's, it's their passion for the yeah. artwork and even people who buy it nowadays, the new collectors that come on board, yeah. their passion for the artwork is unbelievable, that they love them as much yeah, as we is. love them yeah. and that's so important, isn't it? Yeah, really important. Really important. Yeah. Because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them and they give us the enjoyment to keep creating as well. As that's why we always, we always do something different. We don't want to get bored. We don't want them to get bored, and we enjoy just doing all this anyway. You know, we the the impossible side, the creations we've we've produced over the years, has allowed us to create an impossible HQ, which is mm. where we're sat now. You know, it's allowed us to live that side of our lives which we wouldn't have even gone into if we carried on just in regular jobs. So it's allowed us to expand that side, and because of that, the artwork and everything has become more fun. It's become bigger. Mm. funnier mm. the impossibles have got a, a life of themselves mm. now and the collectors do that and we love that you know when 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 a collector will send us a photo of something they've, they've got a, they've got a piece and they put it in a certain position for a certain reason you can't beat that when we were selling artwork with the craft fairs all those years ago we were so grateful that somebody had actually paid 20 pound for a print you know that's that's a lot of money to people Today, when people buy a print, it's the same thing. We know it doesn't matter what you buy or what level you buy at, it's a big thing. You're having something mm. and you're taking it into your home and it's one of ours. And we can't ask for more than that, no. can we? No, not at all. And it's, it just means we've made lots of, lots of friends, lots of collectors who's become friends. We've seen mm. them over the years, we've seen them collect, you know, they, they interact with us. And that is something you cannot buy. Mm. Yeah. Shelf life came about years ago, um, years and years ago, years ago, when I was probably about seven or eight. Um, I've been, strangely, at this particular time, there was, um, it's when high streets were proper high streets, you know, you had hairdressers and you had corner shops and things like that. I'll show your age. I know, show me age. It's, um, 
and I've gone to the shop with 10p. You know, as a kid, that was like being, mm. it's like, a having, well, it's like having 100 pounds. It was one of those things. And I wanted something to cheer myself up. So you go there and the counter's really high and you're looking at all these chocolate bars and everything like that and you're wondering what to choose. And not only there was like little sweets and things like that, but there was something I'd never seen before. And it was a packet that said wacky packages on it. <clears throat> and instinctively I just grabbed it. I thought it was just like a fancy chocolate bar initially. And I pulled it off and I looked at it and I thought, well, this is odd. Chucked me 8p at the chap behind the counter and went skittling off down to the bottom of the steps. Started stuffing the sweets in my mouth and I got to this packet, this wacky packages packet and um, tore it open. And as I opened it up, they were all cards of recognisable products with funny names for kids. And somebody had gone to the time of creating artwork that appealed to such a different level that I wasn't ever used to before until I found the Mad Magazines. And They're it was very only, similar only at that style. time I realised it was the same people that did that type of artwork, did these cards. And the whole thing started to I've never seen anything like, like it. They're really decorative. They were just absolutely exquisite works of art. Very undervalued because the, the skill that went into those was a lot more skilled than some of the art that was around at that time. And I always, always wanted to do my own versions of these. You know, using the latest products, me and Possimals and etc. can bring the humour into there, do the parody side of them, but I never had the skill set to do it. Never felt confident enough to tackle something that I knew was so complex, so tricky to pull off in a correct manner, and so difficult to get it accepted as art. So I came up with Shelf Life. So this is my homage to that particular moment in my childhood where I discovered Wacky Packages for the first time and I wanted to do my own impossible UK British version full of our traditional It's a spin on humor. everyday products that people yeah. have got with the impossibles in but yeah. painted exquisitely. Yeah, and that's where it started. Shelf Life is probably different from any other impossible release that we've done before. Where, where previously you'll find that the impossible pieces are, like I say, social situations or based on people, etc. Shelf life comes from a different direction. It comes from my childhood. It comes from a very personal episode in my childhood where I made a discovery, an unexpected discovery um, that's changed the way I thought and also changed how I've approached life from that point on. It sounds weird because all they were was little collectible cards but they gave me an insight into a world I didn't know existed. It's probably one of the biggest dramatic shifts in mm, painting that we've done in a long time with yeah. Impossibles. Because most, most of the collectors will look and see, well, we've done drink and we've done food before. We have not, not like done this. it like this before. Not like this. And we've, we've stripped it back to bare bones as well. The pieces, I've got white backgrounds. There's no They're hiding. Very clean. Yeah, there's no hiding from this. It's all down to the fact you are focusing on that product mm. and you're focusing on the skill that went into creating that. Mm. All hand painted, all oil paints, to made to look as realistic as possible mm. in unrealistic scale. Because yeah. the impossibles are not to scale, you'll see, small impossibles, big product, you know, things like mm. that. It's it's getting all those aspects of it. It's probably the most surreal, non-surreal, still life. Mm that is still socially I like that. right. Yeah, it's quite good, isn't it? Like yeah, that. we could use that. I yeah, like that, we'll use yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, That's it's... Perfect. Is that better? Really, really, yeah. Really that was good. shit hot, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it was. You've got to tell him he's good. If he's being good, if he's being shit, tell him he's being shit. If he's, that was really... Yeah. That was nearly philosophical, yeah, was, mate. Yeah, wow, was, was where quite, did that quite, come from? Quite heavy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. that was heavy, yeah. dude.